Hi, it's still November 25, 2018. Trump names hand-picked panel to supervise, investigate intelligence communi uh, community. A whole lot of Trump supporters may look at this and go, great, okay. So he has this secret advisory board that he has activated. It was a dormant board that was first created by President Eisenhower. It has no formal powers but derives significant authority directly from the president operating as his surrogate to smooth over agency rivalries, investigate misconduct, and, evalu and evaluate intelligence collection policies. The board can do whatever the hell the president wants it to do, and really it's about what the president tasks it with. Wow. So a lot of Trump supporters may think, ah, good, he has reactivated this dormant board because he's going to be, uh, you know, cleaning up that swamp. And there's so many indictments sealed, you know, all the stuff that Q says. And Hillary is finally going to get arrested. I saw an article today, I couldn't believe it. Hillary and others to be arrested within the coming months. Hasn't that been the stagnant information that everybody has received since Q? Don't worry, guys. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Maybe it's coming. Trump has reactivated a dormant secret board. Oh, my God. What are Trump supporters going to be saying about this? Yay, yay, yay. Well, I don't say yay, yay, yay. I say, uh, holy shit. Because we don't know what this board will do. Because this board actually is uh, privileged, confidential. The secret history of the President's Intelligence Advisory Board Let's see, above the politics and ideological battles of Washington, D.C., is a committee that meets behind locked doors and leaves its paper trail in classified files. The President's Intelligence Advisory Board is one of the most secretive and potentially influential segments of the U.S. intelligence community. It was established in 1956. The board advises the president about intelligence collection, analysis, estimates, and about the legality of foreign intelligence activities. And considering that it is so secretive and the paper trail classified, do you really think that this board limits itself, that the president limits himself to only those functions? I don't think so. So the board can do whatever the hell the president wants it to do. If you really had an agenda and were willing to pick reliable people that are also people that are smart and new enough to be dangerous, you could make life miserable for the intelligence agencies through the board. You could also make life miserable for any enemy that you have, the American people, you could target anybody. Hmm. So his appointees, Oracle CEO Safra Ada Katz, the former Senator Saxby Shambliss, a uh, Republican from Georgia, former White House economic advisor Jeremy Katz, Goldman Sachs, there's Goldman, the managing director and University of Virginia adjunct law professor James Donovan, a former CIA and FBI counterterrorism official Kevin Hulbert. And I thought this was interesting. A New Jersey resident named David Robinson tried to find some information about David, couldn't find 
much of anything. And those new members will be joining Trump's appointees made back in May, Stephen Feinberg, a billionaire hedge fund manager and military contractor, and Vice Chairwoman Samantha Ravitch, appointed in August. I don't need to do the research on these people. I do not trust Trump as far as I can throw him. And considering that I can't even get near to him to pick him up to throw him, that means I can't throw him, which means I don't trust him. I'm going to tell you about his other secret advisory boards and secret meetings with people. <sighs> Business as usual in the White House. It historically has wide-ranging influence. Each president essentially uses the board to his needs and liking. The board, to have any influence at all, has to have the full support of the president. Then the board has tremendous influence and power, and this is not a good thing. Here, looking at their backgrounds, those uh, appointees, I would assume they will see their mission as supporting the intelligence agencies, not undermining them, and we have no clue, because it's secretive. And that doesn't really jive with all these presidents, presidents claiming that they're transparent, and it doesn't seem like secret boards are the way to make America great again. So, did you know that Trump <laughs> has an evangelical advisory board? I didn't know this. I just came across this. Now this was posted August 30, and a group called Americans United for Separation of Church and State uh, planned to file a letter on Thursday demanding that the Evangelical Advisory Board cease and desist until it complies with the law. I didn't further research this, so that letter, I guess, was planned for the first week in September, and the the President of Americans United for Separation of Church and State stated, We are tired of watching him give unprecedented access and influence to one religious group, and we're tired of the secrecy. We're asking them to shut down. It violates the um, FACA, Federal Advisory Committee Act, which Congress passed, I think in the 70s, uh, to make unlawful any behind closed doors, these secret boards, to prevent their influence. Well, when you're having these secret meetings with any kind of group, you're violating that act. But who cares? We don't have a constitution anymore. And these, these people just don't follow the law. The law is for us not for them, but which was really, the whole thing is kind of surprising to me. Um, the, the group filing the letter, which is a letter to cease and desist, um, they also said that this board, the Evangelical Advisory Board, is doing substantive work with the Trump administration behind closed doors without any sunlight for the public to understand how and why decisions are being made. The board said, we don't exist. <laughs> Love it. The truth is, there actually isn't a board. Oh, okay. We're going to take the board's word for it. But apparently Trump held what was akin to a state dinner for evangelicals to honor uh, Dallas pastor Robert Jeffress, who is a frequent advisor to Trump, uh, who said that the dinner was half state dinner and half campaign rally. The dinner also concluded with remarks from 
Um, evangelical. Evangelist, I'm sorry. Wow, my brain, man. Evangelist Paula White, who presented the president and the first lady with the Bible that she said was signed by over 100 Christians, evangelicals that love you and pray for you. Evangelicals are, they give their full support to Israel. Is Trump an evangelical Christian? He sure has given his full support to Israel. Uh, but yes, the group says that this uh, advisory, secret advisory board is not only divisive and not right, but it's in violation of established law. Yes. Did you know that a veterans group is suing Trump over secret influence of outsiders? A veterans group has filed a lawsuit against the Trump administration, accusing it of secretly enabling a group of private individuals to have undue influence on decision-making at the Veterans Affairs Department, violating a decades-old federal sunshine law, the federal advisory, it's 70s, okay, uh, designed to prevent the exact type of behind-the-scenes influence that took place at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. Ike Perlmutter, the CEO of Marvel Inter Entertainment, Bruce Moskowitz, an internal medicine specialist, Mark Sherman, an attorney, those are the three who are shaping the changes at the VA. They were allegedly involved in making personnel decisions, pushing for new programs, and potentially personally benefiting from the positions for which they advocated. They had direct lines of communication to the VA secretary, chief of staff, um, according to internal emails and accounts obtained by ProPublica. And I have to tell you, I read this entire article and it reads like a, well, kind of like a novel about the swamp. The swamp at Mar-a-Lago, the swamp in Washington, D.C., the swamp all over. Here is Donald Trump meeting with Perlmutter, as well as... Um, Uh, Rin, Rinis Priebus. Oh, you guys know I'm really bad with names. I was going to read this whole thing because I really do find it very, very interesting, but I'll spare you. Let's just start with a little bit. Last February, now this was updated August 9, 2018. And do we have a date on it? Yes, August 7, 2018. Okay, last February, shortly after Peter O'Rourke became Chief of Staff for the Department of Veterans Affairs, he received an email from Bruce Moskowitz with his input on a new mental health initiative for the VA. O'Rourke replied, received, I will begin a project plan and develop a timeline for action. Which means that Bruce Moskowitz has the power to tell the VA what to do. VA officials. What they're to do. They happen to be members of Mar-a-Lago, Perlmutter, Sherman, and Moskowitz. And yes, I know, they're Jews. You don't have to leave those comments. I know. Um, so, O'Rourke treated the email as an order 
But Moskowitz is not his boss. His boss. <laughs> his boss. In fact, he is not even a government official. Moskowitz is a Palm Beach doctor who helps wealthy people obtain high-service medical care. Trump is privatizing the VA. So, Moskowitz is one-third of an informal council that is exerting sweeping influence on the VA from Mar-a-Lago. President Donald Trump's private club in Palm Beach, Florida. This uh, troika is led by Perlmutter, a reclusive chairman of Marvel Entertainment, who is a longtime acquaintance of President Trump's. The third member is a lawyer named Mark Sherman. None of them have served in the U.S. military or government. But they have leaned on VA officials and steered policies affecting millions of Americans. They have remained hidden except to a few VA insiders who have come to call them the Mar-a-Lago crowd. Perlmutter, Moskowitz, Sherman declined to be interviewed and fielded questions through a crisis communications consultant. Did you hear that? A crisis communications consultant. We've got a crisis. Come, communicate. Communicate our way out of this crisis. That's what crisis communication consultants do. Yes, they downplayed their influence, insisting that nobody is obligated to act on their counsel. At all times, we offered our help and advice on a voluntary basis, seeking nothing at all in return. You believe them? Well, there's hundreds of documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act and interviews with former administration officials that tell a very different story. The Mar-a-Lago crowd spoke with VA officials daily, the documents show, reviewing all manner of policy and personnel decisions. They prodded the VA to start new programs, and officials traveled to Mar-a-Lago at taxpayer expense to hear their views. Everyone has to go down and kiss the ring. That's what a former administration official said. Former administration officials say that VA leaders who were at odds with the Mar-a-Lago crowd were pushed out or passed over, included, those officials say, were the secretary of the VA, deputy secretary, chief of staff, acting undersecretary for health, deputy undersecretary for health, chief information officer, and the Director of Electronic Health Records Modernization. Yes, they, this Troika, used their influence in ways that could benefit their private interests. And Trump, that's what he does. He's not, he does not care about ordinary Americans. God, he cares about increasing the wealth of his friends. The arrangement with the Perlmutter, Perlmutter Sherman, um, Moskowitz, and the VA, it is without parallel in modern presidential history. Oh, you know, I am so sick of all of the corruption the lies, everything. I'm just so sick of it. Mar-a-Lago crowd. One second. So Perlmutter and Moskowitz Sherman acted like board members pounding a CEO to turn around a struggling company. Everything needs to be run by them. They view themselves as making the decisions. That is from uh, former officials. The Mar-a-Lago crowd bombarded VA officials with demands, many of them inapt or unhelpful, 
on phone calls with VA officials, Perlmutter would bark at them to move faster, having no patience for bureaucratic explanations about why something has to be done a certain way or take a certain amount of time. He issued orders in a thick Israeli accented English that can be hard to understand. They got people fired at the VA. Um, it's just so corrupt and everything is about what they want to do and a lot of what they want to do is privatize. Moskowitz's pet cause a national registry for medical devices allowing patients to be notified of product recalls. This I find very suspect. Moskowitz set up the Biomedical Research and Education Foundation to encourage medical institutions to keep track of devices for their patients to address what he views as a dangerous hole in oversight across the medical profession. At one point, the foundation built a registry to collect data from doctors and patients. Moskowitz chaired the board. Perlmutter's wife was also a member of the board. Moskowitz's son earned 60000 a year as the executive director. Moskowitz pushed the VA to pick up where he left off. He joined officials on weekly 7.30 a.m. conference calls in which officials discussed organizing a summit of experts on device registries and making a public commitment to creating one at the VA. I, well, it begs questions. Um, these are for medical devices, a national registry. When you know that they have sensors in everything, and the sensor has a number, and then they have a national registry, for where that medical device went, the medical device, either inside or uh, perhaps outside the patient, and we know that people can be targeted. I, that's what I think this National Registry is for at the VA. Just another means to keep track of all the veterans. Now, I can't say that definitively, but that is what I thought. These people don't care about people. They don't care. So you have to try to think about what is behind their intentions. What are they trying to do? Because you can bet that Moskowitz, Perlmutter, and Sherman, and Trump do not care about our veterans. Sorry if that offends you Trump supporters, but uh, I think that you really um, are wanting to believe something that makes you feel better about where this country may be headed under Trump, but it, it ain't going there. So this foundation that Moskowitz had started, it shut down. Um, Moskowitz's son is no longer involved, but in his opening remarks at the summit, Peter O'Rourke then the acting secretary of the VA offered a special thanks to Dr. Bruce Moskowitz and Aaron Moskowitz of the Biomedical Research and Education Foundation as driving forces behind this national registry. Trump, well, he campaigned on promising veterans that they will have a choice, that they can see 
uh, doctors outside the VA system. Well, you can bet that that is going to be awarding an awful lot of Trump's friends, um, financially. The Mar-a-Lago crowd weighed in on the side of expanding the use of the private sector. We think that some of the VA hospitals are delivering some specialty health care when they shouldn't. And when referrals to private facilities or other VA centers would be a better option. Who the hell are these people? They don't have any expertise in the Veterans Administration. And yet they're calling the shots. So yes, this is about enhancing their power and wealth. And no doubt, um, instituting nefarious systems in the VA. So they proposed inviting private health care executives to tell the VA which services they should outsource to private providers like themselves. It was precisely the kind of fox in the hen house scenario that the VA's defenders had warned against for years. Another clash with this Mar-a-Lago crowd in the VA was how to improve the VA's electronic record keeping software. The contract with a company called Cerner would cost more than $10 billion and take a decade to implement, but Moskowitz had used a different Cerner product and didn't like it. He complained that the software didn't offer voice recognition, even though newer versions of Cerner's products do. For months, the Mar-a-Lago crowd pressured then, um, I think he was a deputy secretary, this Shulkin, who got squeezed out of the VA because he wasn't going along. They just wanted a yes man, so they got Peter O'Rourke that they just love. Um, whether or not this uh, electronic record keeping software went in the direction that this trio wanted it to, I don't know. But here, O'Rourke, allying himself with the Mar-a-Lago crowd, states in one of his emails, it was an honor to meet you all yesterday. I want to ensure you that you have my VA and personal contact information. He then provided his personal cell phone number and email address using personal email to conduct government business can flout federal records laws as President Trump and his allies relentlessly noted in their attacks on Hillary Clinton. They all do the same thing. It's all staged. Trump attacking Clinton? Uh, they're still friends. So Perlmutter welcomed Peter O'Rourke. I feel confident that you will be a terrific asset moving forward to get things accomplished. Who the hell are these people? Well, they're the secret trio that is directing policy at the VA, which is completely against the Federal Advisory Committee Act. It goes on, you know, these people, the corruption is so established. It's just established. It doesn't matter that the name and face has changed who's sitting in the White House. They're all the same, all the same. Um, President Trump signs bill to expand privatization of the VA healthcare.
helping out his friends. The executives of um, medical care facilities. And it will also help private insurance, no doubt. This is a fabulous article as well. Steve Cohen is spending millions to help veterans. Why are people angry? The hedge fund billionaire. Yes, he loves veterans with PTSD. Oh. Well, privatizing the VA. Um, he set up these free clinics for veterans with PTSD. And it was such a shoddy setup that it left a lot of veterans who were in therapy for a little while and the clinic just closed down and they were abruptly uh, their therapy ended abruptly. You don't do that to people. Not when they're patients with a history of trauma. It, it makes them far worse, not better. But, you know, I will, I will link below to this article. It, these people are so disgusting. They even look disgusting. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'll link below to all of the articles. And yeah, guys, Trump, no better than any of his predecessors, pred former presidents. I can't talk anymore. Ciao.